to our virtual worship experience here at New St. John. We welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for believing in us. Every time we take one step, you take two. And we ask for cloudy days and you beam down sunshine. And we ask for mercy and you shower us with love. And we ask for success and you crowned us with victory. Your love is too great for us to understand. Double our faith and double our courage and double our praise. And I pray that you would touch my mind now and steady it, touch my heart and my health, hide me behind an empty cross and an empty tomb. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite your hearing this morning from 1 Samuel, the 22nd chapter, verses 1 and 2, from the New King James Version. David therefore departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adam. And so when his brothers and all of his father's household heard it, they went down there to him. Everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was discontented gathered to him. And so he became captain over them. And there were about 400 men with him. I want to talk this morning about how to trust God when life does not make sense. How to trust God when life does not make sense. If you have read the Bible for any length of time, you know that David's life was full of ups and downs. He experienced a decade of contempt. contempt at which time he found himself in a cave. He spent a great amount of his time in this particular cave, but it was never God's intention for David to spend the rest of his life there. In fact, God's perspective, the cave was not David's final destination. It was only a place designed to facilitate David's development. And so God uses David's cave as a part of his growth process. That's so significant because often we look at where we are in life and we conclude that where we are are our final destination. But more often than not, where we are is not our final destination. Where we are is only a place God has decided to facilitate our growth, development. And if you were to ask David, he would confess that his time in the cave really worked to his advantage because, because contrary to popular belief, God is always up to something. When you take a look at David's dilemma in 1 Samuel 22, you will discover that David's cave led to his growth in three different ways. First, it brought him closer to the Lord. And if you're honest, you can probably admit some of the trials and things you have gone through have served to bring you closer to the Lord. The Bible does not go into much details about how close David got to the Lord as a result of being in the cave, but there is one thing clear about his time there. He spent some time writing some of the greatest songs of the Bible. And he will tell you from the beginning of Psalms 51 and 1, he says, Be merciful, O God, for my soul 
trust in you. The cave brought him closer to the Lord. David went through something that was very difficult, but the difficulty of the situation birthed in him a greater dependency upon God. In other words, David learned to trust God with his soul. David says, trusting God is not just something I say, but trusting God is something that I do. I have had my back up against the wall enough. And I have cried tears. I, I paced the floor. But I praise God that my trials and my tears have transformed me. My chaos and my calamities have all been used as a source. He says, to bring me closer to the Lord. Perhaps you can echo that same sentiment. Some of the things that you've gone through, some of the trials you have experienced, and some of the pain you have had to bear have given you a greater dependency upon God. And you have learned for yourself that God is a way maker, God is a promise keeper, and God is our strength in our moments of weakness. And God still loves us in spite of us. And while David dwelled in the cave, he began to feel like his destiny had been derailed. He was afraid. He was alone. He felt like a failure and felt as though he had nothing to offer God or anyone else. David was going through the roughest time of his life. He was at his lowest moments ever. But the scripture tells us God let David know that his life still had value. God sent David a bunch of broken brothers that needed to be put back together through David's experiences. God can use your experiences to help somebody else. 1 Samuel chapter 22 verse 2 says that everybody who was distressed, everybody who was in debt, everybody who was discontented found their way to David because he had something to offer them in the cave that Saul could not offer them in his kingdom. And that's good news for, for us. Even in the lowest moments of your life, God can use those moments as your highest ministry. God can take your misery and make it a great part of your ministry. And while David dwelt in the cave, in addition to coming closer to the Lord, the experience built up his confidence as a leader. And it let him know that even though he was in pain, there was still purpose for him in life. If you are at the breaking point in your life, just know that there is still purpose in your life. You are still usable. You are still salvageable. You have not made a mistake so bad that God does not have an eraser for it. You have not gone through anything so bad that God does not have forgiveness for your faults. You're not going through a season so difficult that God cannot step into the context of your situation and turn things around. So David, thank God for his time in the king. Because first, it brought him closer to him. Secondly, it built up his confidence as a leader. And thirdly, it broke his connection to the land that he was in. In Samuel 22 and 5, David was comfortable in the cave until the man of God, Gap, showed up and told him, David, your season in the stronghold is over. Get up from where you are. Leave the cave and make your way back to Canaan. 
Don't miss the importance of, of this statement. If you have not been, if it had not been for the cave, David would not have been in Canaan. David's story is a reminder to you that sometimes you got to thank God for where you have been because it's often where you have been which lets you appreciate where you are now. Sometimes you've got to learn to praise God for the now moments simply because you remember the then moments. You may not be all that now but the now has taught you how to appreciate the journey. You may cry, but the place you have been taught you that weeping will endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. So David learned lessons. He could not have learned unless he had spent some time in the cave. It is very important that you understand that David's development, because whenever you are in the den of your situations, whenever you're going through strongholds in your life, God will step in and do the same things for you that he did for David. When you're in the down seasons of your life, you're only there because God wants to bring you closer to him, build up your confidence, break something within you that needs breaking. Maybe your praise has been polluted because you have not been given God the rightful praises that he deserved. You were not always on fire for the Lord like you are now. You were not always a worshiper like you are now. You were not always fervent about praising God as you are now. And it is what you have been through which has brought you to a point where you can't help but praise God. People knew all of the misery you had survived. They praised God for you. If people knew how close you are to losing your mind, they would praise the Lord for you. If your friends knew the sickness you were healed from, they would praise God for you. If your co-workers knew how long you prayed for your family, prayed for your child, prayed for your miracle, prayed for a turnaround, and God finally answered your prayer, they would praise the Lord for you. Since they don't know you got to praise him for yourself because you know what the Lord has done for you. David was comfortable in the cave. But however, Gap stepped in and said, David, your season of struggle is over. This place is not your destiny. You need to get up, leave the cave, and make your way to Judah, Judea. But, but, but going to Judea would, would bring him closer to his enemies. Saul, David's enemy, lived in Judah. Leaving the cave and going, going there, meant David would be surrounded by his enemy. But David was obedient. The Bible says, he got up, left the cave, and went to Judah. And even though it was closer to his enemy, David said, it's cool, God. If you want me to go to Judea and to be close to Saul, but God gives David another word. And the word is, David, I don't want you to be close to your enemy. I want you to confront your enemies. I want you to fight against the Philistines. And so David, it's not just close to his enemies, but God then said, I want you to contact. I want you to have contact with them. And I also want you to have conflict with your enemies. 
just doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense for three reasons. Number one, does not make sense for God to tell David to fight against the Philistine. Because David only had 400 men with him. And the men that he has are in distress, they're in debt, they're discontent. And the Philistines' army was a superior army, filled with warriors, and David had weaklings. Philistines had the latest weaponry, but David didn't have any weapons because he was a worshiper. Number two, it does not make sense for God to tell him to fight against the Philistines because David was hiding from Saul. He was trying to live in obscurity. He was trying to live in the shadows. He was trying to blend in. He was trying to hide out and not stand up. Then finally, God requested. Did not make sense because the people who were with David did not want to fight. Told David, David, we're scared, we are afraid, we don't even feel like fighting. David was hooked up with people who did not want to fight, which meant his assignment could possibly lead to his demise. And sometimes God will give you a word that just does not make sense. Sometimes he would put in your situation that doesn't, does not make sense. And when God put you in a situation that does not make sense, he's doing it because he always is up to something. There are times when God says, it's not supposed to make sense. You're not supposed to figure it out. You're, you're not supposed to know what I'm up to. Your job is not to figure it out. Your job is to close your eyes and to walk by faith. Your job is not to try and figure out why me. Your job is to try and figure out how to praise me in the midst of what you're going through. Your job is not to question me. But your job is to trust me. There are a couple of things in this text that David needed to get out of this experience. The same thing that David needed to gain, maybe the very same thing God is trying to give you by taking you on a pathway in life which does not make sense. When you trust God during the times which don't make sense, God will give you victory in your struggle. <coughs> it does not matter what kind of fight you're going through. It does not matter how rough it is. You need to know God put you in the struggle so you could get the victory from him. You're trying to figure out, God, why are you putting me in this struggle? It is a struggle of my life. It is a fight of my life. I've never been through anything like this before. I've never had to deal with cancer, COVID-19. I've never had to deal with rebellious children. I, I've never had, I've never been broke like this. I, I've never been in this depressed. I've never, never been this lonely. I've never been in this situation like this. God, this is the hardest fight that I've ever been in. And God says, I know Guess what? If you can have victory in the roughest fight you've ever been in, what about all these other little sequences of little fights you're going to have? He says, I put you in this to give you victory because when you come out of this, you're going to have confidence that it's nothing you can't handle. So the real question is, can you praise God in advance? If you know in the end you're going to win, can you praise God before time? If you believe in the end you're going to win, can you act like you've already won? If 
You believe in the end that God is behind you working all things together for good. If you believe God is somewhere working it out, if you believe that God is somewhere arranging things for your victory, can you give God praise in advance? The Bible says that David and his men fought the Philistines, took their possessions. God allowed David to go up against the enemy. And the enemy brought their belongings onto the battlefield. They brought livestock and resources onto the battlefield. And so when God sending David out to fight the Philistines, it was not the struggle God wanted David to get. It was their belongings that God wanted David to get. David could not gain anything for the battle that he did not enter. And so God <clears throat> is trying to position you now to gain something from your struggle. But you can't take anything from it if you're too scared to get into it. You got to get into it in order to get something out of it. You may not get the house, a car, a new clothes, but if you gain the confidence that God will fight your battle, that will be enough. The assurance God will never leave you or forsake you. A new praise, a new testimony in your life will be much more valuable because of what you have gone through. God tells David, I know it doesn't make sense to go up against this adversary, but if you learn to trust me, even when you can't trace me, he said, I'll make sure that you come out victorious. You need to know that your God will never put you in a place where he will not keep you or comfort you. And the vision God gives you is not physical sight. But God gives you the kind of vision that allows you to see in the spirit what cannot be seen in the natural. Or with the naked eye. For we walk by faith and not by sight. And when you walk by faith, no weapon formed against you can prosper. When you walk by faith, God will turn your situations around. When you come out of this, you'll come out better than you were before you went in. And when the Lord brings you out of confusing life, you ought to come out with your hands up. I know you've been hurting, but come out with your hands up. I know it's been rough, but come out with your hands up. I'm in the evening of my life, but my evening sacrifice is I praise God because I know what the Lord has done for me. This is the word of God. together drink 
in remembrance of him. After they instituted the Lord's Supper, they sung a hymn, and they marched out of the chamber. And as we go forth in hope and joy, O oh Lord, 